All right, last video, and this is in uh, actually in chapter four, but it's part of unit three, nature of the roots and the discriminant, which I'm not going to talk about yet. We're going to start by solving these three quadratic equations on the screen, and we're going to do them all using the quadratic formula, which will be good practice. Um, so this first one, remember the catch to use the quadratic formula, we need zero on one side, and this one does not have that. So we need to move that minus six, and we're going to do that by adding it to both sides. And we're going to get to there. Now, quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then we're going to fill it in. Negative 9 plus or minus the square root. 9 squared is 81. 4 times a is 1, so 4 times 1 times 6, over 2 times a, which is 1. So there we, we're just going to have a 2 down there. So negative 9 plus or minus the square root of 57, which we isn't nice and neat. It's either going to be a decimal or you're going to keep that radical, all over 2. So if you grabbed your calculator and tried this using the plus, and then tried it again using the minus, you're going to get two roots. And we're going to call these two distinct real roots. And this it has a lot of background behind it in math. Two distinct root, roots, meaning they are two distinctly different uh, x-intercepts. Roots means the same as solutions. When we talk about the root of an equation, we're talking about the solution. And remember, if we were talking about the function, these are the x-intercepts. And real has to do with something called imaginary numbers, which you don't know yet, but know that the right answer here is two distinct real roots. Now the second one we're going to do, up here, hiding behind my face, again, we don't have a zero, and in fact, we don't even have an x. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to move that 2n by subtracting it so it moves to the other side. There's my zero. Now. When we write our formula, we write x equals, well, we're not solving for x in this one. We're actually solving for n. So I'm going to say n equals the negative of b and so on and write my formula down. And I'm going to fill it in. Remember, I have a negative of a negative here, so I'm going to use some brackets. Negative 2 squared is going to give me a 4 minus 4 times a times c all over 2. The negative of a negative makes that a 2. Under here I have 4, and 4 times 1 times 1. That's going to be important, over 2. Because 4 minus 4 is 0, and the square root of 0 is 0. So I'm not going to write this, because it doesn't change anything. Really all we have is 2 on top, and 2 on the bottom, which reduces to 1. This is the only answer to this equation. This one has one real root. So if you think about it, the one with 2, that's a parabola that hits and has two x-intercepts. One real root, I'm going to draw this one facing down, only touches once. And on to this third one. You've probably already guessed what's going to happen. It's in the right order already, so I'm going to go ahead and write down my formula. And negative 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 9, minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And if you think about my lesson and where I'm going with this, Sometimes parabolas have two x-intercepts. Sometimes they have one. It's the other, other circumstance. We go ahead and we do the math here. 4 times 7 times 2. And I'm going to go 9 minus that. And I have negative 47. Here's the problem. Can you take the square root of a negative? Can you find a number that you can multiply by itself and get a negative? No. 
As soon as you see this, you know you have no solutions or no real roots. And yes, if this was a function, this is a parabola that doesn't hit the x-axis. So what controlled all of this? What caused this one to have two, this one to have one, and this one to, and the last one to have none? It's all to do with this thing called a discriminant. The discriminant is this piece in the quadratic formula under the root sign. That's the discriminant. When it is a positive, we get two real roots. When it's zero, we only get one. When it's a negative, we get none. Our discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. When it equals zero, we get one real root. When it's positive, we get two distinct real roots. When it's negative, you get none. <laughs>